Good morning, everybody. Rev. Rick here with Broadman Baptist Church, and today is the Broadman Word for Friday, October 30th, 2020. Hard to believe we're almost in November already. This year has certainly had its challenges and its distractions and its divisions, and one of the things that gets lost sometimes in our society is our rock-solid commitment to a biblical worldview, our theology. What we know to be right and true becomes challenged, and some folks start to look for other answers, and of course there aren't any. So, uh, when we do that, we start to um, degrade the throne of our life. We take Jesus off of his throne when we replace him with other ideas that aren't biblical world views. And people make good friends and loved ones, but they make bad messiahs. Life can only ever be found in Jesus. We do um, tend to put people in our lives in the place of God and ask them to do what only he can do. We look to people who suffer from our same condition of sin and weakness and failure uh, and treat them as they are somehow a fourth member of the Trinity, which of course can't be. It's only a Trinity. Uh, there is no room for a fourth. It's not golf. So we ask our loved ones to give us identity. You know, what kind of a husband am I? What kind of a mother? What kind of a wife? What kind of a sister, brother, friend, whatever? And uh, we draw our identity and our value from life uh, from how we view ourselves in those roles. And really, we should be identifying solely and singly as a child of God and as a following, engaged Christian. You know, we ask people to heal our hurts, or we ask them uh, to try to cause us to be happy. But they cannot give us those things, not in the measures available in Jesus Christ. Anything we receive from people is going to necessarily be flawed and temporary. So, uh, folks will simply never, ever rise to the level of our expectations. We will always be left wanting something. In our relationships, we often try to drink from a dry well and then wonder why we end up thirsty. No human being can be your personal savior. We simply don't have the capacity. So I'm going to read you a passage from John. It's chapter 1, 1 through 18. And it kind of sums up how we are to view this particular uh, failure of the human spirit, always wanting to put something else on the throne that just simply makes us feel better. Maybe it sounds better. Maybe it seems reasonable. But in reality, it's a replacement for the God who belongs there. So here we go, John 1, 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory is only from the Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace, for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. It's John 1, 1 through 18. So here's the bottom line. 
this passage very powerfully uh, captured is Jesus is life. As creator, he gave physical life to our bodies. As an eternal God, he is the source of the life of everything that lives. But there's more as a savior. He is the one who alone gives spirit, spiritual life to our dead hearts. The passage says we are not born again by human blood, by human flesh, or by human will, but by the will of God. It is in that fullness, in his fullness, that we receive life upon grace, upon life, upon life-giving grace. Don't put the burden, don't put the burden of life on the person next to you, even your closest loved ones. It's only going to crush that person by trying to make them live up to something that they can't possibly live up to. And in their failure will be disappointment for you. Besides, you don't need him or her for life. You already have been given life and grace in full measure because you've already been given the person and the work of Jesus Christ. And that is all that is necessary. Please, particularly in this political season, in this time in our country of social division, don't replace Jesus. Don't take him off the throne and put some other ideology or theology up there. It's only going to be temporary. It's not going to be able to fulfill you. It's not going to be able to give you life. And it is certainly not going to be eternal. It will die with the times and the people who created it. Whatever movement, ideology, or theory, and no matter how good it sounds, uh, no matter how good it might make you feel, it's bound for death like everything else of man. So base your life and your eternity on the things that are in fact eternal and that will not fade away and that cannot fail. I love you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord, and I'll see you next time.